Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the June 2018 International A Level um, at Excel Mechanics 1 paper. And this question here is about moments. And we've got here a uniform wooden beam. Okay, so if I'll highlight some of the important words as we go through them. Uniform wooden beam. Uniform meaning that the weight of the object acts in its geometric center. So this is four meters long, so exactly two meters will be the weight acting through that point. That's when it's uniform. Of mass 20 kilograms and length four meters rests in equilibrium. Okay, that means all the forces acting on it are balancing out, and the moments, the clockwise and anticlockwise moments acting from any point are also balanced out in a horizontal position on two supports C and D and they've given us that C is 1.6 meters from A and D is 0.4 meters from D a buoy of mass 60 kilograms stands on the beam at the point P where AP equals 3 meters so all of that is marked as shown in figure 1 the beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position by modeling the buoy as a particle and the beam as a uniform rod which they've already told us there um, find in terms of g the magnitude of the force exerted on the beam by the support at c okay so we got to find the the reaction force at c all right so we're going to find the reaction force at c so let me just put some of the forces here that are acting in this situation so as we said exactly two meters in exactly halfway along the weight is acting of this beam and as they told us, the beam is of mass 20 kilograms, so that's a weight of 20, whoops, 20 G newtons. 20 G newtons, so that's 20 G acting straight down here. Okay, then we have the weight of the buoy, which his, his model is a particle, so we take his weight to act through one point, and his weight is, um, he's 60 kilograms, so his weight is 60 G newtons. So his weight is 60 G newtons. Then we have the reaction force acting on the beam. So these are the forces acting on the beam. So you have the reaction force at C and the reaction force at D acting on the beam. Okay, so these are the forces all acting on the beam itself. Okay, we're, we're only considering the forces acting upon the beam. That's, our, that's the reaction force at C, the, that's the reaction force at D. So those are all the forces acting in this situation. Okay, now many people say, oh, what about the reaction of the buoy and the beam? Why don't we consider that? Well, because we're only considering the forces acting on the beam, not the forces acting on the buoy. So acting on the beam is the weight of the buoy, is the weight of the beam itself, is the reaction force of the supports on the beam. There's also a reaction force of the beam on the supports, which also is acting, but we're not considering those forces because we're only considering the forces acting on the beam not the forces acting on the supports not the forces acting on the boy okay so that's why we don't consider the reaction force of the boy here because we're looking at the forces acting on the beam only all right so now it's telling us to find the magnitude of the reaction force at c now if you want to find the reaction force at c um then we have to basically eliminate the reaction force at d because there's two unknowns and if we take moments if we take moments about c if we take moments about c all right then uh, sorry moments about d not c okay then the reaction force at d will be eliminated because the moment of a force is the force times the distance from that particular point okay that is taken about so the moments of the force the reaction force at D about D is zero because it's acting through D. All right. So if we took at, if we look at the clockwise, the forces that will cause clockwise um, movement, it's going to be R C. Okay. So from D to C, which is the distance between those, which I can just mark here in this way. Okay. So this distance here is going to be basically. 4 minus 2, which is 2 meters. This is 2 meters. Why? Because 1.6 plus 0 0.4 is 2. Okay, and you've got the total distance is 4. So 4 minus 2, so the distance between those two is 4. So you've got basically the 
you got f two times the reaction force at C. That's the clockwise. Um, that will have a clockwise sense around if D was a pivot. Okay, that force. And these two forces will have an anti-clockwise effect. Okay, so that's 20G times. Now you've got the distance between here and here. We're looking for this distance now. Now that distance is going to be basically 2 meters minus 0 0.4 meters. Because from here to here is 2 meters as it's halfway along. So that's 2 minus 0 0.4 which is 1.6 meters. So that's 1.6 meters from this point to that point. So it's 20G times 1.6 plus, and this is 60G times this distance here. Okay, now the distance here is 3 meters. Okay, so we're, we're looking for the distance between these two points. That's what we're looking for. So if that's 3 meters from there to there, it's going to be 1 meter. Okay, that's 1 meter. Okay, because the total is 4. So it's 1. There's, there's 1 meter left. Take away this 0 0.4. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6 meters. So that's 0 0.6 meters there. So it's going to be, that's going to be 60G times 0 0.6. So that's taking the distances from D. So the distance of 60G from D, D is 0 0.6. Why is it 0 0.6? Because that's 3 meters from there to there. That's 1 meter from there to there. Okay, so if that's 1 meter, okay, and that's 0 0.4 meters, that's 0 0.6. That makes it 1. Okay, and the distance from 20G from here, from this point, is going to be 1.6 meters. Why? Because from here to here, all the way to the end is 2 meters, because this is halfway along. If that's 2 meters, 2 meters minus 0 0.4 is 1.6. And there we have this equation. So we can see that RC is going to be all of this divided by 2. So it's going to be 20G times 1.6 plus 60G times 0 0.6 all divided by 2. That's going to be the answer for the reaction force at C. And we're going to take G as 9.8. So we have 20 times... In fact, I can leave it in terms of G first. So we have 20 times 1.6... Let me just put this under one big fraction. 20 times 1.6. I'm keeping it as one big fraction here. Um, plus 60 times 0 0.6 divided by 2. That gives you 34G, um, which if we multiply by 9.8, gives you 333.2 G, uh, 332, 333.2 Newtons. Okay, so that, that's the answer in terms of um, G, that's the answer which we can actually round because we're using G as 2SF, so you can write this as 330 Newtons or 333 newtons all of these are acceptable ways of answering the question okay that's rc now we've got to find what r at d is now to find what the reaction force at d is i don't actually need this i can do it in two ways now the by far the easiest way is to use the fact that we already found what rc is and we know that because this is in equilibrium that rc plus rd must upward forces must be balancing out with the downward forces that's equal to 20g plus 60g All right i could take the moments about c to find what rd is um, and that would be fine i can then take moments taking this as a pivot so i'd have this distance times 20g plus that distance times 60g equals that distance times rd but what's far easier is because i already have what rd rc is i can find what rd is now by um, just using this formula here so i know rc is i'll write in terms of g first 34g plus rd and that's 80g so i can say rd is equal to 80g minus 34g okay so that's going to be 50 46g the reaction force at d is 46g newtons okay so you can just take your answer 
which was 34 80 minus 34 gives you 46 if you multiply that by 9.8 it will give you in terms of um, you know just um, without the g so it's 450.8 newtons so that's going to be 450.8 newtons so we can write that as 451 newtons or we can write it as uh, 450 newtons all of these are acceptable answers 3sf 2sf in terms of g they're all acceptable that's fine so that's the answer for part two of this question we found now the magnitude we found now basically the um, magnitude of the reaction force at c and we also now found the reaction reaction force at d and now we've got to go on to part two of the question or part b of the question sorry it says the boy now starts to walk slowly along the beam towards the end a so he's moving in this direction find the greatest distance he can walk without the beam tilting so what's going to happen is he's going to move along this direction towards a he's going to get to a certain point and at that point the beam will just be about to tilt means that this part of the beam it will be just about to lift off the support at the time at the point where this is going to just be lifting off the support okay then what's going to happen at that particular point is the reaction force at this support will become zero so we want to find the point at which the reaction force of this point d at this reaction force at this support d is zero and the beam is still in equilibrium so it's still in equilibrium but the reaction force is zero here that means if the boy moves any further then it will tilt okay so that's what we have to find so let's go about and do that now okay so this boy is going to be walking along here walking along here and he reaches a certain point and at that point which he reaches this beam is going to be about to tilt so that means the reaction force at D will become zero. So we want to find when the reaction force at D is equal to zero. Okay, so we want to find when the reaction force at D is equal to zero. All right, what's the greatest distance you can walk for that to happen? And we know that's RC. We know from before that the weight of the beam is um, 20 G Newtons. And the weight of the boy, we know, is 60 G Newtons. Okay. So we want to find the greatest distance he can walk from P. Okay, from the place that he was originally. Okay. The place that was originally, which was 3 meters away from A. So what I can do is, I can actually take moments about P. Okay, so I'll, I'll, what I'll do is, I'll... I have to find this distance. This distance, I'm going to call it x. That will be our answer. I can take moments about anywhere I want to, but taking moments about here um, will help us because I can find out the values of all of these because I know that RC has to equal 80 G Newtons. Okay, RC plus RD is equal to 80 G. Now, RD is equal to zero. We know RD is equal to zero because it's about to tilt. Therefore, we can say RC is equal to 80 G Newtons. So I, I know RC is 80 G, so I know all the forces. So if I just take P as my pivot, then my X that I find in the end will be my answer. So if we take moments this time about P, taking moments about P, taking moments about P, all right, then I have my clockwise moments, which is basically R is going to be the reaction force. Okay, so what's the distance between the reaction force and this point here? Well, it's going to be 3 minus 1.6. This distance here is 3 minus 1.6, which is 1.4 meters. This distance is 1.4. So you have 1.4 times RC. And I know RC is 80 G. So 1.4 times 80 G. That's the clockwise moments. And that's equal to, okay, the anticlockwise moments, which are this distance here which is basically um this is we know that this is three meters and this is two meters so this distance must be one meter okay this is one meter because from here to there is two meters as this this way is halfway along the beam so that's going to be one times 20 g so you're going to have one times 20 g that's 
one clock that's one of the anti-clockwise moments and the other one will be this 60g plus 60g which is his weight times the distance of that boy from this point p which is we called x and that's what we have to find that's the greatest distance he can walk without the beam tilting such that the reaction force here will be at zero okay and it will still be in equilibrium so it's still in equilibrium but the reaction force here is zero so if i calculate this i have 1.4 times 80 which gives us 112 so that's 112 g equals and that's 20 g plus 60 g times x so if i rearrange this i'm not going to use the g because it will cancel out i have 112 g minus 20 g okay um is equal to 60 g x now you see the g's will cancel out here so 112 minus 20 is 82 okay 112 minus 20 in fact it's 92 okay that's 92 sorry about that that's 92 is equal to 60 times x therefore x equals 92 divided by 60 so divide that by 60 and that gives you um, 23 over 15 23 over 15 meters which is basically 1.5 three meters to three sf 1.53 as you can see or you could write it as a fraction i guess it'll be one and eight over 15 if you want meters that's fine if you write it like that um and that's the greatest distance you can walk from p without the beam tilting okay that's as far as you can go without the beam tilting. That's 1.53 meters. Okay. You could also walk in this direction. Okay. But I don't think you can go as far as that because this distance here, P is, as we know, the distance P is 3 meters. So there's only 1 meter left for him to walk in that direction. Okay. So he can't go more than 1 meter because he'll get to the end of the um, beam. All right. So in this direction... He can walk longer than that and the beam at that point the beam will still be equilibrium okay but it's about to tilt so that's as far as you can go any further than that the beam will tilt okay so there's the answer to that question um part b and um any other questions that you want to watch from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this um, section over here this area at the end of the video and other questions about moments from M1 can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can look at the index of my M1, P1, P2, all the AS and A2 um, units as well as my IGCSE um, playlists and index by looking at the description and looking at the links there. Um, you might find them useful. Your friends might find them useful. Thank you for watching and see you soon.